Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. It's the first Thursday of the month, which means we're in the kitchen with Across the Fence with our chefs Carolyn Peak from Williamstown and Deb Plumley and Lynn Jarvis from South Hero. Our theme this afternoon is comfort foods, which is very appropriate as we head into the colder days of November and beyond. But our first order of business is to congratulate the winner of our free cookbook drawing from last month. The winner is Janet Gregoire of Barry. She'll receive the recipes from the Heart Cookbook. Our congratulations to Janet. It. Now this month we have another cookbook to give away. One of you lucky viewers will win this 384 page cookbook, Grandma's Best Love Recipes. It contains recipes from soups and stews to cakes and pies with a special section featuring holiday recipes. Lynn will be showing you a recipe from the book, The Cinnamon Honey Buns, and I'll explain how you can enter our free drawing at the end of today's show. Well Deb, we have lots of recipes today so I'll let you get at it. That sounds great. Thank I'll you be back so to much. I'll sample later. That sounds good. Well, let me start with this recipe for pasta carbonara. And I have to say that bacon, pasta, and garlic are high on my list of comfort foods. One nice thing about this recipe is you can almost consider it to be guilt-free because the sauce only uses a tablespoon of fat. So you start by cooking your diced bacon until it's brown in a skillet and add some garlic at the end. Meanwhile, cook your pasta until it's al dente. Now to make the sauce, it's simply some starchy pasta water, eggs, Romana cheese, and just a tablespoon of bacon fat. You want to add that to your drained pasta, stir it until it's nice and smooth, and then top it with the bacon and garlic. Yum, yum. Serve it perhaps with a tossed salad and some crunchy rolls, and you've got a very comforting meal in a short amount of time. So that's my recipe for pasta carbonara. Now I want to share with you my viewer recipe from Carolyn Bourgeois of Regence. And this is her family's favorite comfort food. It's called meat and potato pie. And I have a slice of it here that I'll show you so you can see the layers. So you start with making your meat layer, which is ground beef, some breadcrumbs, egg, and some onions and you press it into a pie plate. You're going to bake that for about 25 minutes, take it out of the oven, and then you top the uh, meat mixture with mashed potatoes, the remaining condensed soup, and some shredded cheese. Put it back in the oven until the cheese is golden brown, it's bubbly and heated through, and you've got a wonderful homey dish, very comforting, and I wanna thank Carolyn for sharing this great recipe with us. Now my next recipe, I want to thank our friends at Cabot Cheese for helping us with these grown-up grilled cheese sandwiches. And I call them grown-up because they've got a few extra touches that I think make a grilled cheese sandwich a little bit special. You start with some herbed butter, and we have the recipe for that included, and you spread that on some nice sandwich bread. Then you add a little layer of mustard, and some finely sliced cheese. And I happen to use Cabot's white oak cheddar for this recipe because it's got a smooth, buttery, buttery flavor that's just perfect. Then you add a little bit of mustard, some thinly sliced apples, some more cheese, and top with another slice of bread. Cook that in your skillet until it's golden brown. I like to press it down a bit. It gives it a nice crunchy, crunchiness to the sandwich. Serve that with some soup and you've got a great comforting lunch. Now I think comfort foods are not complete unless we talk about desserts. So this dessert, some viewers may remember, is from the Bakery Lane Soup Bowl restaurant in Middlebury. They put out a cookbook and this is their famous recipe for fresh apple cake. It goes together very easily. The cake is studded with lots of chopped apples, some walnuts, and lots of spices. Afterwards, you frost it with a brown sugar and butter frosting that's just full of caramel goodness. So that is yummy. My last recipe is peanut butter and chocolate chip cookies. And this old favorite is redone in a flourless, dairy-free recipe. This is from the King Arthur Flour site. 
It's simply peanut butter, brown sugar, an egg, and some baking soda. Drop this, well, once you add your chocolate chips, drop this on a parchment lined cookie sheet, bake for about 10 minutes, let them cool completely, and you've got a wonderful, yummy snack that even those folks on a gluten-free diet can enjoy. So those are my recipes to share, which I hope our viewers will try. And Carolyn, how do you sp spell comfort food? Um, anything that's easy to make and just warm and gooey and oh, things like and that. It looks like you've so, got some great recipes oh, to yes, share. Yes, I do. Well, like I say, for me, comfort food is something that's, you know, it's reminiscent of childhood and it's a, a type of food that maybe is ooey and gooey or just something warm. And it's especially comforting if I don't have to do a lot of fixing. And these recipes are really nice because there's not a lot of fixing. I'm going to start off with a meatloaf, and this is totally different from one that I grew up with. It, this has, uh, it's made with sausage, and then of course there's the onion and the tomato sauce and, and oh, whoops, I've got the wrong, I'm reading you the wrong recipe. Excuse me, I'll switch them. Meatloaf, ta-da. Um, it's got the bread and the hamburg, and there's bacon in it, and it has on top the ketchup and, and some more bacon. It has relish in it, so you've kind of put all your, hamburger toppings right into the meatloaf. And then you just cover it with some, the ketchup and some more bacon, and you're all set to just serve it and have something really good. Now, my slow cooker, this was what I started you off with before. This is a lasagna, done in the slow cooker. You can't beat that. You're layering in your sausage and your tomato sauce. We'll just scoop out a chunk here. On top of the, the no-cook lasagnas that you just do up. It's got the layers of cheese and uh, ricotta cheese in it. So you've got this really nice lasagna that you have just put into the slow cooker and you're good to go. Now, no meal for me is complete without rolls of some sort. And I came across this recipe the other day that they are squash rolls. Well, I have to admit, these are pumpkin. But it doesn't matter. You can put them squash or pumpkin. They are, you start out with your dough. You make little, you roll it out and make rounds of it. When you cook it, or when you get ready to cook it, you put a, a pat of butter inside and then fold the thing over and you can see the little hole there where the butter was. And so you're all set to have a nice roll with your meats. And I'm gonna set this aside because you've got to have a salad of some sort. And for that, I have just a plain old Waldorf salad. Lots of apples, raisins, nuts, and then a coating of mayonnaise and sour cream. So we've, we've got a really nice comfort meal right here. And last but not least, my viewer recipe, which is from Betty Magoon of Colchester. It is a velvet almond chocolate fudge cake. It has got chocolate up to the top and back again. I can't wait to try this, which means I'm not going to wait to try it. I'm going to take this with me, but it has chocolate chips and chocolate pudding and chocolate cake, and I think you'll find that it is perfect for the end of a meal. I think we're going to have to fight over that. Yeah, no, because I'm <laughs> taking this with me. <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to show you these just came from my garden this morning. and but You haven't had snow on your garden, have you? No. and We have. A, <laughs> I guess they wouldn't be growing in Williamstown. No, okay. not up on the hill anyway. <laughs> okay, well, we'll uh, maybe give these to you take home. Oh, then. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Carolyn, and I'm thinking that Thanksgiving is just three weeks from today, if you can believe that. So I'm going to begin 
with a recipe from Joan Cranes, and she's of Williston. Here it is, it's her turkey crunch casserole, and take a look at this. Uh, and I think it's probably a recipe that she and her family really enjoy because it's a great way to use up leftover turkey, or you could use chicken. And I think it's a real comfort food this time of year. You start by putting in the bottom some green beans, and then over that you put your turkey. Let me move this little turkey out of the way. And then, uh, then it goes in some mushrooms and some cream of chicken soup. You can see it's all mixed together. And then you top it with chow mein noodles and onion rings. Bake it for about 30 minutes at 350 and you have a delicious meal uh, with that leftover turkey or chicken. And also, if you're cooking for one or two, this would be perfect because you can cut the recipe in half or you could put it in the freezer for later use. So we thank Joan for that recipe. Now I think the perfect complement to go with our casserole is this cranberry orange ring. And it comes from the cookbook that Janet won over there in Barrie. And if you want to make this, Janet, it's on page 72, and you'll get this in the mail right away. So here's the cranberry orange ring. It's easy to make as you buy, you buy the store-prepared cranberry orange relish and the crescent rolls. But I don't buy my relish. I use the same recipe that I did when I was growing up on the farm in Andover, where you have the old hand crank and grind up the oranges and cranberry, but it took forever. But now we have our food processor, so it's much easier. So once the cranberry relish is ready, you spread it out on the dough and roll it up and then place them in a ring like you see here. And then uh, once it's cooked and cool, you glaze it with a confectionery sugar glaze. A wonderful addition to any Thanksgiving or Christmas meal. Uh, it looks delicious and we're looking forward to trying that. Now I think anything made in the crock pot is comfort food. And this is one of my favorites. It's called the pork cassolette. <clears throat> and to the pork, you add some Italian sausage, diced tomatoes, onions, beans, and just before serving, we're going to add some crushed bacon and shredded cheddar. Now just look at that. And you can just imagine what this will take lo taste like on a cool fall November day. Uh, one of my favorite uh, recipes from the crock pot, and I hope you'll give this a try. And a wonderful compliment to go with this cassolette are these cinnamon honey buns. Take a look at these. And I think anything with honey in it is a comfort food. And the recipe is uh, in the cookbook that you, one of you lucky viewers will win, Grandma's Best Recipes. It's going to be um, on page 200, so good luck to all of you viewers with that. So getting back to the recipe, it's easy because you use frozen bread dough. Once the dough is thawed, roll it up and uh, sprinkle it with honey, butter, nuts and raisins and make it uh, up and cut it into 12 slices and bake at 375 for 20 minutes and you have these delicious honey cinnamon honey buns. And my last recipe comes from Virginia Lange of Sheldon. She sent us about 40 of her favorite recipes, all nicely done on index cards. We thank her for that. And this is one of my favorites. It's her pineapple crisp. And pineapple always makes me think of warm tropical climates to help me get through these cold winter days. So once you make your crust, uh, you put your pineapple mixture over that with some lemon juice and sugar, put the rest of the uh, topping on, and you have a great recipe for these cold winter days coming up. <laughs> Makes me think of Hawaii or some nice warm place. Yeah, these would be some great recipes for Thanksgiving, too. I Three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, well, as always, you can get these recipes online or by mail. The recipes are online at the Across the Fence website. Go to uvm.edu slash extension and click on the link to Across the Fence. You'll find the recipes on the left-hand side of the webpage. To get the recipes by mail, send two 
$2 and a stamped self-addressed business size envelope to Comfort Foods, Box 188 South Hero, Vermont, 05486. Now remember to include the $2 and a self-addressed stamped envelope. Now, your envelope will be used to enter you in the free drawing. If you are not ordering the recipes, um, just send along your name, address to the address on the screen, and that will enter you in the free drawing for the cookbook. Best of luck to all who enter. In our next In the Kitchen program, Thursday, December 4th, our theme will be holiday recipes. How was that cake? Oh, it was <laughs> great. Get the recipes just for the cake. From all of us here at Across the Fence and Channel 3, I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence. Thank you.